so here are 10 results of integration so we will be dealing with these kind of integrals so integral of the functions like 1 upon square root of quadratic so quadratic is like any quadratic uh, polynomial like ax squared plus bx plus c and then you might have square root of quadratic right integration of that thing or you might have 1 upon a linear function and then the square root of another linear function so like this you might have some trigonometric functions and then there are some definite integrals right so they uh, they are pretty important because these integrals uh, uh, are solved using uh, using methods that are not standard and that's why their values matter a lot right because I don't know somebody would just put up this question and then <laughs> you don't know how to solve this uh, in short time and then the only way to actually do it is to memorize these things so for example an integral like integral like this uh, so it's the Gaussian integral you just have to memorize this there's no other way around it right so at that particular moment when you are in the test trying to solve this you won't be able to just uh, derive this all on your own right unless of course you have um, already had some experience with it but otherwise you just have to memorize this value right so uh, already deal with the integral beforehand and then just memorize the value and just copy paste the value uh, when you are in the test right yes so that's why i'm i'm presenting these uh, pretty complicated definite integrals to you because these are like not so straightforward to solve right so for example look at this integral uh, so these two sixth and seventh integral um, I did them recently and yeah like those are not so easy to form uh, yeah because the thing is like first this guy is the sixth integral this relies on a trigonometric series right so the addition of that trigonometric series is uh, what we'll be looking for but then to actually find the trigonometric series you have to either do a lot of guesswork or you have to deal with complex numbers which right both of them are just uh, not easy to do in a short amount of time and then look at this integral man this thing it, it's got a square over there right so this you could have done by yourself maybe right what about this thing yeah it's not easy to do it's not easy to do at the time of a test because you have these squares and yeah so you got integrals like these and then natural log of sine x this also requires um, some non-trivial thinking right because you will have to think of it as um, you know like solving an equation something like that not just uh, you know applying the methods and getting the answer no no no. you want to solve an equation like for example you do integration of e power x sine of x right the way the standard way uh, you do that you have to do something like that over here to get this value anyway and then this is this is involving Feynman's method so I mean yeah at the time of exam you won't know if that method is even applicable over here right you will be you will be going completely blank because they will give give a as some kind of nice number they might give one or one upon two or something like that right if they did give us some very complicated number you might realize that okay this is a general result and not just based on that and on those nice numbers so maybe they just give you the year of the question right so, so like 2011 2000 whatever then you would know how to do this thing but otherwise yeah there's no there's no hope for you you can't solve it and then look at this thing Gaussian integral so this involves uh, a bit of thinking outside the box and like using two variables and then writing that uh, writing the product of um, so not exactly the product wait yeah, it's not a product it's uh uh it's slightly dip oh yeah actually it is the product right so writing the product of those two integrals which are in independent variables uh in the polar form right so e power negative x square negative y square the, the double double integral of that thing right you want to do that in the polar form and then finally we'll get something right so yes uh, this is pretty complicated and then the 11th uh, result it's not an integral right away but uh, this is something that can yeah yeah that can uh, save you a lot of time if you know uh, you don't actually want to uh, go through the process of solving this differential equation so just I, I just have a formula for this thing so uh, this has some requirements that that P and Q uh, 
uh, those must be constants otherwise uh, you can't apply this formula because i mean if they're if they're functions yeah that's not good then alpha beta don't even make any sense right so the standard method is that you would try to factorize this by thinking of a polynomial so like x square plus px plus q equal to zero you would first factorize that thing and then use the same alpha beta values uh, to somehow like factorize this equation yes and then once you do that uh, yeah i mean just multiply by some kind of integrating factor uh, that works for both the factors so the both the uh, brackets that you made multiply by an integrating factor and then you can go forward uh, and finally get the solution but why do all of that instead just memorize this formula which is honestly it's not that complicated is it no i don't think so right i mean this looks very easy actually so just integration of e power alpha x uh sorry e power alpha x times integration of e power negative alpha x and then f of x dx right i mean the ordering and what exactly alpha bit r what's f right these things can uh, be confusing at times but overall not so uh, hard to remember i think okay so uh, these these two formulae uh, these involve mostly real numbers right so we'll mostly be dealing with real numbers but sometimes uh, sometimes the quadratic will be such that uh, you can't deal with real numbers anymore you might get a square root of negative number or you might get negative numbers in, inside the natural log or something like that right or maybe natural log of a complex number right what about those things so for that uh, i have these things right so these uh, guidelines you could say now the problem is uh, over here i mean i didn't i didn't realize when i was uh, working out how i would actually solve these on a test right so i didn't realize uh, that the way i'm defining square root of a complex number is not the way it's actually defined so over here what i did is that i let theta be in 0 to 2 pi right uh, so theta is supposed to be positive that's what i said and also as small as it could be and that's why in 0 to 2 pi and then i said okay just take theta upon 2 and you are done right that's what that's our uh, you know uh, square root but the thing is wikipedia doesn't define it like that instead they say make theta come into negative pi to pi so in that interval and then do the thing so then uh, just do square root of r and then e power i theta upon 2 right so the way they do it is that i mean uh, why they do it is because uh, they want the real part of our square root uh, to be positive but i don't want that to happen i just want i just want a definition i don't want the definition right so even if you use that it's okay except that these notes that i made uh right so for for these functions i have made uh these notes of when they will be uh, you know distributive on multiplication right so you can see if i define it like that then this will be distributive uh, when you have argument of z1 plus argument of z2 being less than 2 pi that is when you multiply these z1 z2 together the argument should not be bigger than 2 pi because then you will have to reduce it down right so it won't match anymore right so uh, these uh, these nodes would change if you use the other definitions so the wikipedia definition but it doesn't really matter as long as you are consistent with it right yeah because in the end they are not exactly asking you to uh, to find the square root of a complex number no they are just asking you to you know find the uh, result find the result of the integration which you can do in any kind of method you want just be consistent with the notation you use um, and the definitions that you make right so in this case i'm making this definition okay so let's just uh, go through it so what's the square root of a complex number so we can write the complex number in polar form and you can always make the argument to be in the in the 0 to 2 pi interval so 0 inclusive 2 pi not inclusive because 0 and 2 pi both actually go the same direction so don't include 2 pi for including 0 and it's more natural to include 0 i think and then the square root of the complex number is just the square root of the modulus and then that times e power i theta upon 2 right so it's very straightforward and then uh, the thing is like this this uh, formula square root of z1 z2 is equal to square root of z1 times square root of z2 uh, this this can work for you know positive reals but then when you have negative numbers and uh, complex numbers as z1 and z2 this uh, doesn't all the time work because sometimes your 
argument for z1 z2 uh, right so our theta value when you i mean look when you when you do theta 1 plus theta 2 uh, whatever that value is sometimes that value uh, might lie in uh, might not lie in the interval 0 to 2 pi and then you will have to reduce that down and that's why you have to be careful uh, while doing the square root right so for example square root of negative 2 times negative 2 that's square root of 4 of course which we would expect to be uh, you know 2 right but then if you use this formula i know i mean it's not actually correct <laughs> but if you use this somehow then uh, this would be written as square root of negative 2 times square root of negative 2 which we know just 2 iota times 2 iota but that's sorry uh, square root of 2 iota times square root of 2 iota which is negative 2 and that's not 2 right that's the problem okay i mean and other absurd results are also uh, i mean obtained after using this formula for example you could just have you know square root of negative 1 that's iota but you can also write it as square root of 1 upon negative 1 and then say it's like 1 upon iota but that means iota is equal to 1 upon iota but that means negative 1 is equal to 1 which makes no sense right okay anyway uh, so that's for the square root function uh, and then you have the natural log function so for real numbers it's i mean for positive real numbers natural log function is a well defined function because you can only have one output value but then for a complex number the thing is you can write complex number in the polar form and then using the rules uh, of our natural log function uh, as we use them in real numbers you could just you could just uh, split it as natural log of r plus i theta but then theta could be so many different values right so that's why uh, this has to be defined like this that r i e power i theta when you write in polar form your theta should be in 0 to 2 pi and then you can do this thing right so for example natural log of 3 plus 4 iota that can that can be written as natural log of 5 because that's the modulus of this complex number plus i sine inverse of 4 upon 5 and now uh, you also have to be uh, very careful about what uh, you put here because okay you might just have negative 3 negative 4 iota and um, and then if you do this like you know it's it's tan value so the tan value of uh, of this uh, theta for uh, for this complex number negative 3 negative 4 iota that's going to be 4 third right so you can't just write natural log of 5 plus i tan inverse of uh, 4 upon 3 no because tan inverse of 4 upon 3 refers to the angle in the first quadrant here we're talking about the angle in the third quadrant so you have to be careful for that this is what you can use this thing so like these uh, inverse functions right be careful when using them sometimes uh, sometimes they don't work like that I mean like the way you expect them to work right okay and then once again natural log of z1 times z2 is equal to natural log of z1 plus natural log of z2 this doesn't always work it only works when it works right that is when argument of z1 plus argument of z2 is less than 2 pi anyway now let's go to the formula so the first formula is uh, i mean the first two formula are okay so these are under the condition that we are saying q is a quadratic it's given by ax square plus bx plus c where a b c are any kind of real numbers so no restriction on them right except of course a cannot be zero because over here you see like you have one upon square root of zero and everything so yes a cannot be zero uh, but <laughs> if it's zero then that wouldn't be a quadratic would it be right so that decision is i mean there all the time but other than that there is no restriction these can be positive negative whatever you want but a cannot be zero right so uh, like all quadratics uh, these can be written as a x dash square plus c dash right so by completing square and then when you complete the square you get x plus b upon 2a as our x dash and uh, c minus b upon 4a as our c dash right and then it's easy to see that this integration of dx upon square root of q by using the you know usual formulae right that they have uh, for these integrations right you just get one upon square root of a natural log of square root of q plus x dash square root of a plus k so i have written in in uh, this particular form uh to i mean also to make this more compact and also uh, because square root of a it will give us the 
imaginary unit sometimes so sometimes just have square root of a being negative right sorry uh, a being negative then square root of a will give us the imaginary number and then i just have square root of a in the denominator over here i can't write it as uh square root of a and then upon yeah don't do that right stick with this formula because this is tried and tested it works right i mean you might write it as square root of a upon a and then you know iota upon 81 that turns out to be one upon iota even then it turns out to be one upon iota uh but yeah like okay don't do square root of a as iota in one place and then negative iota in some other place right don't do, don't do that stick with the definition whatever definition it might be or uh, square root of complex numbers yes okay uh, then you have this other formula so it's for square root of q dx so it's half uh, and yeah like this half uh, comes from um, it comes from uh, writing I mean doing partial oh, sorry uh, doing addition by parts and then uh, thinking of uh, the equation that you get as an equation in integration of square root of q dx right so you solve for this square root of so integration of square root of q dx right so get it get that on one side isolate it divide by whatever coefficient you get on the left hand side and then you get this formula right so not a big deal it's doable you can derive it at, uh, at the time of a test yes okay so it's half x dash square root q plus c dash integration of dx upon square root q so instead of writing all of this stuff over here i just i just wrote uh, c dash integration of dx upon square root q because it's more natural right and it also gives us a hint of how this was actually derived so you know if you don't remember anything right uh you you might still be able to do it because you re remember some parts of how the formula should look like and then if you get a re get a wrong formula uh you can just disregard this and whatever right so these two are you know very easy to derive not so hard but the thing is once you start to generalize these uh, to you know all kinds of abc values so not just the specific values for these uh, for which these give like real answers and you know they don't involve complex numbers at all right so for those values it will definitely work but then it also works for values where you have complex numbers uh, inside natural log or you know complex numbers uh, somewhere over here or something like that right and uh, by the way since we are dealing with complex numbers all the time, we might as well just say that our integration constant is also complex number, yeah? Because in that case, uh, even if you like get uh, some complex constant uh, while manipulating all of this, right? You can just make that go into this constant and then never worry about it, yeah? Okay. And then there's this other formula. So if L is a linear function in X given by Px plus Q, uh, we can write C as Q minus AP. Okay. Uh, so, once again, Q is the constant in whatever is inside the square root over here. Yes. AP are... So, A is the constant uh, of whatever is outside of the square root. So, the linear function that's not inside the square root. Yes. And then P is this guy's uh, coefficient of the... I mean, the, the linear term, right? So, Q minus AP. Uh, that's what we will call C right and then this integration uh, can be can be uh, done like this so 2 upon square root c natural log of square root of l minus square root of c upon natural log of uh, upon uh, square root of l plus square root of c so yeah i mean this is nice it's good to remember i think uh, this 2 upon square root c now there's a there's this 2 over here which yeah i mean like it looks why did this come over here the thing is it comes from a uh, it comes from uh, the use of situation, right? Whenever you put L is equal to T square or something like that, right? It comes from that. But anyway, this is a, this is the formula and this can also be generalized. So, uh, I mean, there will be cases when your C becomes, uh, you know, imaginary. Sorry, square root of C becomes imaginary or so. Yes. Then once again, just, just write this in the polar form, right? And then uh, do the thing. Take the natural log of the complex number you obtain, right? Yeah, and then you will see that eventually you will uh, get to the formula involving tan inverse, right? The usual formula that they have for uh, these integrals, right? Uh, when it doesn't fit into this uh, this format, yes. So they use the other format which involves tan inverse, 
but then instead of using that we could just use this thing for that format as well so the the not to be able to one and then yeah it works okay so till now i mean it's just generalizing well known results to complex numbers and now we go to uh, the actual things that are i mean like hard and not so easy to do so first of all you have this reduction function which is actually not that hard this is doable just by additional parts but the thing is uh, so you can't just be doing it all the time right uh, yeah so instead uh, you just make a formula out of it and then keep using that so you might uh, anyway just derive this formula uh, at the time of your test it's not that hard to do and in fact tan so the the uh, recursion formula for integration of tan to the power of mx that's even easier to derive right so this was okay somewhat complicated this is even more easier anyway the thing is the way we are generalizing this thing is well it's not like all the complex numbers or anything instead what we're doing is that uh, we are just making n be uh, all kinds of integers so not just positive integers but even negative integers so the so the uh, the benefit of doing that is that whenever you have uh, the secant squared or you know like secant power 3 or something like that right whenever you get that kind of uh, integral you can just write it as 1 upon cosine power 3 or cosine power negative 3 of x and then deal with it and okay by the way uh, you might ask okay where's the where's the recursion formula for cosine power m i mean just put x equal to x plus pi upon 2 or replace x by x plus pi upon 2 in this formula and you get the thing yeah so no big deal just know these two formulae and then you are good to go you can do anything or you know don't even remember this just derive at uh, derive this at that point okay and then you have these things so uh, you got this formulae right what if uh, instead of doing definite sorry indefinite uh, integration just did definite integration so you carefully chose uh, the boundary such that this extra term that becomes zero so you know a natural thing would be going from 0 to pi upon 2 right that just makes this to be 0 and since the n should not be equal to 1 uh, just have sign to some you know some integer power yeah oh and by the way uh, in, in these two uh, formula your n is actually positive right uh, okay not over here over here you can also have n being uh, you know uh, so your n being I wouldn't say zero or anything. Uh, yeah, right. So okay, over here as well, your n should be positive. But then even if n equal to zero, it kind of fits in the format, except that this formula doesn't work anymore. So in both these formulae, your n must be positive, right? And then you can do this thing. Yeah. Okay. And uh, how are these actually uh, derived? thing is just do integration of cosine square x dx from 0 to pi upon 2 and you do integration of cosine x dx from 0 to pi upon 2 which is 1 the first one is like pi upon 4 whatever and then you use these recursion formula so the, so the integration of this term from 0 to pi upon 2 well, that's going to be 0 right and then you are of course putting x plus pi upon 2 instead of x so you just get cosine as the thing right so yeah like for sine and cosine both of the um both of the things your recursion formula is the same in this particular case so yeah and then that's very obvious because you could just do uh, just do pi upon 2 minus x over here so go the opposite way and then this becomes uh, you know the integration of sine to the power of 2n x dx so both of these work okay so this is nice right and then you go to these formula which i had to derive currently uh, without any help whatsoever <laughs> yeah so uh, i even made on I, I even made videos on uh, the so separate videos you can watch them to get more details of how these were derived but i'll just present the formula so first you have integration of sine of some odd number uh, times x and that upon sine x dx right 0 to pi upon 2 and this integration is always pi upon 2 so no, ma no matter what n is it's always going to be pi upon 2 sin 3x upon sin x integration of that thing no problem it's pi upon 2 sin 5x upon sin x no problem it's pi upon 2 keep on going right 
and then of course when you put n equal to 0 it becomes sin x upon sin x which it's obvious it's pi upon 2 because it's just the integration of 1 yes okay then you have this other formula so integration from 0 to pi upon 2 of sin square nx upon sin square x this is harder to derive so this is more important to remember this is pi upon 2 times n for all n belonging to whole numbers right so for example uh, sine square of 2x upon sine squared of x that is like 4 cosine squared of x so integration of that thing which is be 4 uh, times pi upon 2 which is pi over here n was 2 so pi upon 2 times 2 is also pi and this is a good verification yes but the thing is pi upon 2 times n it's not that hard to remember anyway so yeah like this formula is good then you have this formula so natural log of sine x dx 0 to pi upon 2 it's supposed to be negative pi upon 2 natural log of 2 right so this is not that hard to remember uh yeah except that you have this natural log 2 and negative which is okay kind of hard to remember but yeah overall not that bad huh because this is like tremendous importance i think because uh they have asked me questions about about this i mean involving uh this integral uh too many times now so yeah this is uh this is very much useful and then you have this other uh kind of thing so natural log of one plus a sine x upon sine x so till now we dealt with you know sine of some some uh integer times x upon sine x right we also deal with natural log of sine x what about natural log of you know some kind of trigonometric function and that upon uh trigonometric function what about that kind of uh, integral so you can do this easily using a uh, Feynman's method right so you just uh, think of this thing as a function of a and then you know differentiate find the definite integral after that and then once again integrate with respect to a right and then you will land to this um, formula yes okay so just a quick check so um this is of course i mean like it's only going to work for a not equal to zero because like if a is zero it's just natural log of one and <laughs> yeah and then it makes yeah like natural cosine of zero cosine inverse of zero uh that's pi upon two so this uh, doesn't match up with that in any way yes but for other things so when a is not zero so let's say a is uh one then it's like natural log of one plus so so yeah one plus sine x and i think upon sine x dx so that would in in this case be negative cosine inverse of one uh, squared so that's going to be zero so zero squared like this should be zero right that's what it's saying so natural log of one plus sine x upon sine x that integrated should be uh should be zero yes okay and then you have other stuff so it got negative pi upon 2 to pi upon 2 of the same integral yes uh, which is easy i mean just do this integral so 0 to pi upon 2 and then you do uh, negative pi upon 2 to 0 and with some substitution you can see it's the same integral except instead of a you are putting negative a and then get the, get the thing done right and then like there's a change of sign i think over there yeah there's a change of sign or maybe not yeah i don't remember that but the thing is it's doable yes so you can get this formula from from uh, from this formula okay and then you have the gaussian integral it is very well known except of course in you know the standard academics it's not that well known right but i think it's a good thing to know right uh, because it like this guy's derivation involves uh, concepts that are you know linked to integrals that may happen to come in uh, tests sometimes yeah so uh, integrals that are easier to deal with in polar form instead of or you know spherical coordinates instead of uh, cartesian coordinates right okay then 11th is a formula when you have um, a differential equation right so the, i made a video on this thing you can watch how it's how it's derived actually why this formula works and what are the applications of this formula so for example you can analyze simple harmonic motion using this formula and a bit of complex number uh, complex numbers thrown in yes you could also you know analyze uh, lcr circuits or any any kind of thing yes okay so i think that's good so we should stop because we are done with this uh, with these 11 results okay so i'll see you guys in the next video
Uh-oh. 